Hi guys, for today's video, I will be sharing my editing secrets. So this has been my most requested video ever since I started doing YouTube. So this video will be divided into two parts. The first part being all about branding and how to create content if you're an aspiring content creator. I'll share my experiences and the brutal truth that I wish I knew when I started out. For the latter part of this video, I'll be sharing my editing process, where I get my music, and how to make your videos more immersive by using sound how to color grade, use transitions, effects, and some of my tips and tricks. So without further ado, let's get right into it! I use my Canon EOS M100 and my iPhone 11 to film. When I started YouTube, I didn't have a camera yet, so I just used my phone, which at the time was an iPhone 7 Plus. You don't necessarily need the best equipment before you decide to start creating videos, so just work with what you have. And then, this is where all the magic takes place. So my laptop's model is an Asus VivoBook Pro 14 OLED, and if you want to know more about it, I have a separate video where I share the details, the specs, and my thoughts on it. If you want to watch it, I'll just leave the link up here and down below in the description box. I highly recommend it if you're looking for a laptop, especially if you're an interior design student as well. This would work for you too. Lastly, I use my iPad Pro M1 to do my graphics on Procreate, which I'll talk more about later. So what is a niche? It refers to a genre, a subject, or a topic to make videos about. It's what makes your channel unique. It took me a lot of finding to really decide what I want to do. I tried fashion, I tried hauls, daily vlogging, which I now privated because I cringed so hard when I rewatched it. Anyway, I started posting interior design related videos, which is my course in college right now, by the way. And I saw that people liked it, so I continued down that path. And it's like the best of both worlds. Oh. Q Hannah Montana. Best of both worlds. Basically, knowing your niche on YouTube will help you build your brand because you will have consistency in your videos, which is the key to be successful in YouTube or if you want to turn your YouTube hobby into a lucrative career. Like for example, look up your favorite YouTubers and ask yourself what made you subscribe to them in the first place. Do you expect to see more videos about a certain type of genre from them? Some tips on how to find your niche is to first identify your interests and passions, which you've probably already done, so that's a check. Next is to choose a specific type of content. Content because the more specific it is, the better. Your niche should give you endless video work because you wouldn't want to run out of ideas anytime soon. The sooner you accept that you need to create for the viewers and not just for your own interest, the faster your growth will be. I cannot stress this enough. This is something that I wish I knew when I started out because I was only creating for me and didn't put into consideration if the viewers would like the content that I'm putting out there. So put yourself in your viewer's point of view and ask yourself, is this something that I'll watch? Will I be interested to click on this video and finish watching it? It's also very crucial and important to have a target audience because you want to build a community here and you want to create content around people who has the same interests as you and would appreciate your craft. Now we're moving on to the fun part which is all about editing. Yay! I love the process that goes on in editing because it amazes me how much we can highlight a certain moment in time and make it look more special than it already is. There's the basic editing, creative editing, and advanced or high-end editing. Basic editing is having the raw footage speak for itself, like you only use simple transitions and text. This is what most known bloggers use because their personality is already the main backbone of their content. So if you think you have the personality to entertain, then that's a plus point, you know, because you can easily catch your viewers' attention just by simply being yourself. Next is creative editing, which I try to incorporate in my vlogs. In this area, you familiarize yourself with different tools in an editing software and basically make your videos more entertaining by using different techniques. Editing can be a very technical process, but don't forget it's also a creative process. Lastly, there's advanced or high-end editing, which focuses on storytelling, animations, and is mostly used for professional work. This covers more complex and unusual techniques because you have more knowledge about different editing methods. 
the first YouTuber that pops into my mind whenever I hear the phrase advanced or high-end editing or creative editing in general is none other than Mr. Kelly Wakasa. If you also watch him here on YouTube, cookie for you. Oh, his videos are always so well done and he's so good at storytelling. He has his own editors which is why I think he belongs in this category or in this genre of YouTubers. Are you team Cashly or team Kelly? Let me know! <laughs> To find your own editing style, just look for inspiration. You can look up your favorite YouTubers, your favorite movies, shows, artists. Your favorite colors can also be a source of inspiration by focusing your visuals around it. You know, we're always inspired by another person's craft and we ought to be an inspiration to another. A full circle. Ah, uh -uh, but take note, while it's all good to get inspiration from different creators, I do not recommend copying them or plagiarizing their work in any way. Remember, you're an artist, full of creativity yourself that no one can take away from you. You might be wondering how I can say that you're creative when I don't even know you. Well, you were created by a creative god, so you can't help but be, yes, creative. <laughs> You're an artist at work. You're a work in progress. I'm a work in progress. It's only a matter of time before you enhance your skills and discover hidden talents of your own. So just enjoy the process of learning. I started out using iMovie and honestly, it wasn't the best. I used to switch from different apps just to get the kind of edit I wanted since, let's be honest, iMovie doesn't have a lot of features in it. And so I believe Wondershare Filmora 11 is a great editing software to use. Oh, how I wish I knew about Filmora when I started out. My editing workflow would have been much efficient and easier. I'm glad to say that this video is sponsored by Filmora. It feels surreal to say that because you guys know how much I love editing and to be reached out to by a brand like Filmora is a huge achievement for me, okay? Nonetheless, all of the tips and techniques that I'll be sharing with you guys today are the things that I've learned throughout my YouTube journey. And you can use these tips on any editing software you'd like to use, but I genuinely recommend Wondershare Filmora 11 because it's a beginner-friendly editing software and it already has a lot of features in it that you can use for your videos. You don't have to use multiple applications to produce quality contents like how I did back then. Filmora 11 can be used on both iOS and Windows devices. It's very easy to navigate even though you have zero editing skills yet. I have a link in my description box below if you guys want to try out Filmora for free so go ahead and check that out later after you finish watching this video. So I'll give you guys a quick run through of the software before we dive into editing. Here you can see the user interface. This window right here is where you import your video clips, images, and audio. Then right next to it is the preview window where your footage is displayed. Below is the timeline where you drag and drop your media to create a video sequence. And up here is the media tab where you'll find all of your imported media. Here are some sample colors and sample green screens that you can use to add a specific effect to your video. Then we have the preset templates tab where you'll find numerous pre-made templates you can use for your intros and outros. You just have to drag it to your timeline. As you can see, it's already layered and edited for you. So if you wish to use this template, all you have to do is to just replace the media with your own and play it back and there you go. Next, we have stock media where you can find lots of GIFs and 4K photos which can come in handy when you're editing something that requires visuals to better connect with the audience. As you can see, there's a search tab which makes it easy to look for a certain image. Then there's audio where you can find some background music for your vlogs as well as sound effects. This is really convenient if you also take importance of the music that you put in your videos. Then there's titles, transitions, effects, and elements which elevates your video to be more entertaining. Let's dive into my editing process. So usually I start by transferring the files from my SD card and my phone to my hard drive, then to the editing software. Then I do the rough cut and then I add texts and graphics, transitions, sometimes I color grade, then I add the sound effects and the songs I chose for that video. I do my intros last and I'll explain why later. So first, I look through my media and drag it one by one to the timeline to create a sequence. 
Then I do rough cut, which is the most time-consuming part in editing. Literally, this process takes me at least two hours or more if the video is long. This scissors icon or the split tool is my favorite feature in Filmora 11 because of how efficient it is to use. I like how it's already attached to the red line and you can just click it to cut your video. For some filler clips, like for example, a video of the sky or a corner in my room, I cut it down to at least 5 seconds and for clips where I'm doing something, I speed it up by 2 times or 4 times. I try not to make my clips too long because it can drive away viewers since our attention span as humans are pretty much down the drain by now. <laughs> After doing the rough cut, which takes me like I said hours, I now begin adding my texts and my graphics. This is where I begin adding subtitles here below or as you call it, captions. Here are some of my most used fonts. Yes, I only use a few because as much as possible, I like to use my own handwriting by creating graphics. Filmora recently launched a new feature which is called the speech to text feature and I absolutely love it. Filmora will automatically recognize a voice and transcribe it into subtitles. This is such a game changer. I don't know if there are other editing softwares that has this feature too. It will literally save me a lot of time and just boost my editing efficiency. So to do that, you just have to select the clip and click this speech to text button. Wait for it to transcribe. Take note that this may take a few minutes depending on the length of your video. And then it's done! But if it got some words incorrect, you can always edit it by double clicking on this newly added layer. And here on the left side, you can see the timestamps of the added subtitles and you can edit some words if you'd like to. You can also change the font, the size, placing, etc. When I first discovered this feature, I was so amazed because of how easy it is to use and how quick it can transcribe speeches to text. I'll definitely be using this for my future vlogs. Now for my graphics. I use Procreate on my iPad to create my own doodles and titles. If you're wondering how I do those moving animated texts, I first write down a word, a phrase, or sometimes a little doodle. Then I add another layer on top and trace over it. I usually repeat this step two to three times, but it's up to you how many layers you want to add. Here's a little tip for this. You don't have to trace it perfectly because the messier it is, the better the animation will be. Sometimes I add frames or colored backgrounds to make it look more cute. So if you want to do it as well, just drag the clip to another layer above because you'd want it to be in front, not behind the background. Then select a sample color, pick a background you want, expand it. Then double click the video and adjust the scale to your liking. Now the available colored backgrounds here in this media tab are already fixed which means you can't customize the colors anymore. So if you want to choose a specific color yourself, all you have to do is go to the titles tab, choose a title, any will do, place it again underneath the video clip, and then double click it. Select advanced and click this little shapes icon on top and choose the square shape. Then just expand it to fit the screen and you can customize it, change the colors and everything. Once done, click OK and there you go! After this, I move on to adding transitions. I usually use the circle transition, film dissolve, and the push or slide transition. Filmora has a lot of built-in transitions that you can play around with, so you just have to drag it on the middle part of two clips. Moving on to color grading, I used to color grade my videos before, but to give you a glimpse on how to do simple color grading, double click the clip you want to enhance, then go to the colors tab. Here you can adjust the white balance. I usually adjust the temperature and the brightness of my videos and Filmora makes it very easy to do so. If you want a sage green effect, which was the kind of effect I opted before, just tweak the tint to the left side and adjust according to your liking. This part is fully up to you on what effect you want your videos to give off. 
Sometimes I use keyframes to create my own transitions. Keyframing requires more patience for when you're editing because it is a technical process but the result can be pretty satisfying. Keyframing is when you want a certain object or the camera movement in general to move from one place to another. For example, let's use this PNG photo of a sticker. Double click on it and select animation. Place the photo on the right side of the screen until it's invisible. As you can see, you already added a keyframe. Next, move to the last part of the clip and move the image to the farthest left side until again, it's invisible. Play it back and now you have an animated image. The same process applies to creating transitions and here are some examples of mine. We need to submit it later at 2 p.m. So the usual sound effects that I go for are the mouse clicks, the sound of a cassette tape for my circle transitions, and these are some of my favorite sound effects in Filmora 11. The swoosh sound, the double pop, the computer keyboard, and the camera snaps. music, I get my non-copyrighted songs from Thematic, which is a huge platform where you can find a bunch of different artists and use their songs in exchange for giving them credits in the description box of your video. And here are some of my favorite songs from Thematic. For songs, look for those that you think will best fit the vibe of your video. To make your video stand out more, make sure to align the clips on the high beats of a song. This gives a smooth transition for your clips. You can do this manually, but you can also try out Filmora's Auto Beat Sync feature, which automatically analyzes beat points to add video effects or switch the view. background music to a negative 15 or lower depending on the song that I chose. Now let's say you're talking in a clip and then the next clip is a time lapse wherein there are no sounds at all. So how do you adjust the sound level of a song? You use keyframes again. Yes, you can use keyframes for audio too. So first you double click on the song. Scroll down a bit and you see this little corner over here. This is where you add keyframes. Now moving on to the next clip, somewhere in the first part of it, adjust the sound level back to zero. You can see it automatically adds a keyframe already. And then play it back and you can hear the little sound transition. The sixth hour, the ninth hour, so I also studied that and wrote it down. Another technique that I have is to create a song transition by aligning the last few beats of a song with the new beats of another song. This makes a very smooth transition as well and it's so satisfying to hear. part of my editing process which is creating my intro it's my favorite part i do this last because this is where i take my time to fully conceptualize and try new editing techniques because the intro is like the cover of a book it's like the trailer of a movie 
I also do this last because after editing the main content or the main body of my vlog, I'm able to garner ideas and I can truly see like the whole aesthetic or the whole vibe of that video which can influence the type of editing I want to do for my intro. My process for doing my intro is usually I first select the clips which I think highlights my video the most and copy paste it to the beginning of the timeline. For my titles, I always opt to create my own graphics and use fonts for my subtitles. There are lots of film overlays available on YouTube that you can just download, but if you don't want to look far, Filmora is right here. There's also a lot of available effects in Filmora 11. As you can see, there are overlays, filters, and even this multi-screen effect which is used by some creators that I follow. These are some of my favorite ones. the last part of my editing process, none other than my outros. I already have a template for this in Over and I just change the text whenever I create a new vlog. So usually this is where I share my Bible verse for the day which varies depending on what I've reflected that time or what I believe I'm called to share because at the end of my video or at the end of my day rather, everything that I do, I do it all for His glory. I wouldn't be able to learn all of these things and be where I am right now if it weren't for His grace and supply. So, those are all the tips and techniques that I have for you guys today. But then again, the best tip that I could give you is to just be yourself, explore your creativity because we are all creative in our own unique ways. Enjoy the process of learning. It's truly, truly fun. I hope this video was able to help you in any way and has encouraged you to try something new for yourself. Like, I don't know trying out Wondershare Filmora 11, maybe? The link will be down below in the description box if you want to try it out and start creating videos of your own. Thank you again to Filmora for sponsoring today's video. And that's a wrap guys. Thank you for reaching until the very end of this vlog. Be sure to follow me on my Instagram because that is where I mostly post like updates and whatnot. I hope to see you in the next vlog.